First, we'll hear from Coach Abe for opening remarks. Then we'll open up to questions for the student athletes. Then we'll circle back to Coach Abe for any other questions. Coach? Opening remarks. Uh, this, this year for us in, in UCF women's basketball, I mean, we uh, were, I mean, we were, our RPI was a four. Our net was a 20 something. I mean, our team is amazing. Our team is amazing. We accomplished so many goals. I mean, we set out at the beginning of the year to win a lot of our preseason games and we really scheduled, you know, high level teams and we accomplished a lot of those goals that we set out in our preseason. Then we went to conference and we only we only lost one game in our conference, um, which is pretty hard to do no matter what league you're in. Um, obviously, our conference is a really strong conference. It always has been, always will be. Um, we set out to win the regular season conference championship. We did that. We set out to win the conference tournament championship. We did that. We came here. Uh, we came here to to this to to the NCAA tournament here, and had to play a Florida team, which I don't understand why, but. We beat, last year we lost in the NCAA tournament. This year we got that first win. Um, so these young women are special. They are special. What we did for this season and what these young women did every single day, I can't even tell you. I don't even know how basketball coaches, if you're not a basketball coach, you don't understand how hard that was to accomplish what we did for this season. And no matter what, I always say, after we go to the NCAA tournament, it's just a matter of time because only one team's gonna win, you know? And it's gonna be in a small, small window of time. So, I mean, I, I, I told them, keep your head up. You are warriors. You are a great team. You deserved Sorry, a better place to go play. Why would they brought us back up here? And I love—I mean, I, I think this is a great program, but I don't know why we had to come back and play them again for the sixth time, the seventh time, the hundredth time. Like it's just so you know. Maybe if we were at any different place, we could have maybe advanced. I mean, I don't think anybody in the country wanted to come here and play in the NCAA tournament. So I mean, neither did I. But we fought, and you know, to me, we're just as just as good of a team as, as they are. So, but the biggest uh, point is that I know you're going to ask a lot of uh, questions about them, but I want our questions to be about us because these young women are amazing and they've done a lot of great things for this program, this school, this university, um, you know, and UCF is, you know, a great place to be. And, and, you know, I, I can't say enough for Masa Nikaba. She's been here for five years and she's had a historic career. Um, obviously, Tay has been here only for three years, and she's, she's, you know, we put this program on their backs. And Diamond, I mean, this is her fourth year, so we're blessed she's coming back uh -huh. to play another year for sure. So I'm just, pr I'm proud. I'm a proud coach. I'm a proud mom. You know, I'm a proud whatever I am to them. That I'm super proud. Thanks, Coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes. Please wait till you get the microphone. Diamond and Tay, you guys were down by 12 with ver just under five minutes to go. There was a timeout, and then you guys went on that run to eventually pull within three. What kind of was said, either on the bench or on the court, to kind of spur that comeback and to keep fighting to make it a one-possession game? I mean, um, we've always fought through adversity since last year, so we know what it's like to be down. We know how to fight back. Um, we always know that um, it takes four minutes – Four minutes a quarter, so that's what we do. We talk to each other, um, we fight for each other. So that's what we did, and we fought to the end, and we gave it all we had. <laughs> Pat Eaton, Rob from the Associated Press. Um, Diamond, can you talk about the physicality of the, the game? I mean, it started right from the beginning with the what happened in the corner there, and like seconds seconds in, and just kept up through the through the whole game. Was that the kind of game you guys were expecting, that kind of a, a physical game? And can you just talk about the toughness of your team? Um, we were expecting to be physical, but I don't think they were expecting um, us to be as physical. Um, 
I mean, we came out and did what we do best. Um, the toughness, that's what we are, that's who we are. UCF is just a tough, gritty team. We're going to always be that way. Nothing will change it. So um, from the beginning, we knew how we had to play, and we played that way for 40 minutes. Um, Azar from MB Magazine. Um, Diamond, um, when I saw you Saturday, you had like a, a look in your eye, like, no, we're not going home, considering what you went through last season. So when you guys came on the court today, and just probably from the taste you had last season to be in a dance, clearly when you come back next season, that's not the goal. The goal is probably to get even further, knowing Coach Abraham and the way how she moves. She's always going to go one step further than she did last year. So what's, what's, what, with that being said, what's going to be the goal next year, just with the taste that you had of basically taking the fight to the champs in their own hometown? I mean, I have big shoes to fill with Tay and Moss leaving. Um, <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I mean, I gotta get my teammates ready, and it's always um, the next year is always about going further than what you did last year. Um, having this feeling, knowing this feeling, is always gonna leave a chip on um, your shoulder. So, just getting my teammates ready for next year. Of course, we're gonna want to make history next year and go further. So, I'm um, just getting getting my teammates ready, fulfilling the leadership of Tay and Moss, and doing what we did this year. You said you said Tay is leaving. This is your this is your last game. So I always feel like whenever a senior or when somebody leaves, they they have earned the right to give the their platform to, to say, put in the words what the season has been like, everything. Um, I feel like you've earned that right, being what you put into this and everything. So if you could please just elaborate just about the season, everything that you contribute to this program, and please take your time. <laughs> well, this has been a great year for us all. I mean. We came back for a reason. Me and Mossy came back for a reason. Um, it's been very successful. We've been very blessed to just, you know, have each other and just make so many accomplishments. Like, we wanted this game as so bad. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason, and I believe they can get it next year. Um, I love those girls. <laughs> I love Coach Abe. Um, it's been great being here. Um, I hope the recruits see that um, we're nothing to play with. We're going to fight to the end. So hopefully that's the school y'all want to go to. <laughs> Diamond, Jason Beattie with the Orlando Sentinel. What more can you say about Moss and Ikaba? Oh, Moss. Um, she's a leader. She's a sister. Um, she just, she does so much for us. So um, Moss, when she comes into practice, locker room, uh, games, uh, she set the tone with her, her leadership. She let us know to lock in. And she leads by example. When Maz get on the floor, Maz don't see a shot she don't like. Maz know nobody can guard her. Like, it's all mentality for her. And when she leads that way, everybody else just steps up a notch. And, like, I know most people think that I give energy to the team, but Maz gives me a lot of energy when I see Maz going hard and when she's getting rebounds, she's getting in ones, she's yelling, she's on defense blocking shots. That fuels me just as much as I feel my team. So when Moss leaving, it's, it's, it's going to be heartbreaking. But I mean, she's always going to be here for me. So that means so much. Yep. What what'd you call her, Coach A, the point guard of the defense? <laughs> Moss. Yeah, the point guard of the defense. Yeah, she's, she's good. <clears throat> Any other questions for the student athletes, guys? Okay. Hey, thank you, Diamond. Thank you, Tay. You can head back to the locker room. Congratulations on a terrific season. Thank you. Any questions for Coach Abe? Over here, Kat. Coach Jim Clark from Women's Hoops World. I don't think they're arresting us. Uh, you know, you said, wish we didn't have to come in here which makes sense, but I think it's also true from the other side. They didn't want to see you guys because they know from the time in the, in the uh, AAC, and especially that last year, that there wasn't another team in that league that could get to this point and do what you guys did tonight. So what's your reaction to that? You know, that there probably wasn't a whole lot of teams that wanted to see you guys in this tournament either. Yeah, I mean, I hope that's the case. I mean, that a lot of teams didn't want to see us, you know. I mean, I think, I think, you know, I've obviously been around and I've coached a lot of different places and 
Um, I just, I just, um, I just think this was our one of. It might actually be one of the best teams we'll ever have at UCF. It, it, and because of the COVID situation, where the fifth year's got to come back, that is, that's a big thing. That's a big thing because it's the maturity part, it's the experience part, it's the, you know, just teaching and the, the growing and the consistency is just, that's a really, really big thing. So, I mean, I, I, I just, whoo, when, when it came up, I, I was actually really shocked we had to play all the, I, you know, I was a big advocate for all the Florida teams. We have six teams in the NCAA tournament and immediately we got two were taken out because they're playing each other. I just don't get it. I don't get it. You know, and so then then seeing where we were going, I'm like, you know, not not because I don't think we can win, and not because of that, just because like I just did that for five years. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm sure they felt the same way. Like, let's play. This is the NCAA tournament. We shouldn't be playing teams that are you know 100 feet up the road and then coming back. You know, up into the up into this the same situation. So, you know, but the the positive. The positive thing about it was we've been here before. We know what it's like here. We know how to play here. We we knew what to expect, just everything. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it is what it is, and, you know, we didn't get out of here, but um, it's just a matter of time. I mean, everybody's going to lose. Only one team's going to win. And, and the WNIT, too, you know, when you play in WNIT. So two teams are going to win, two teams. But I always tell my teams, you know, this, this, this team was really special, really special, and – they 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 did some amazing things and you know I mean we got a 70 C2 that was the highest in in school history and and actually is the highest I've ever as a coach got is a seven seed you know and so that that was because of our accomplishments that's because you know if we went by RPI our RPI was like a four crazy number you know and and our and that was really good too so I'm just proud of our team and you know it's it, it hasn't hit me yet that it's over. Coach, what did you think changed um, at the end of the fourth quarter when you guys were able to make that comeback? Because it's not easy to do that, especially in a game like that where it's such a slugfest that points are hard to come by, um, either just X's and O's wise or uh, approach mentally. Yeah, I mean, it was me in, the, in a timeout, you know, just talking to them and telling them to just keep, keep fighting. And then the game's not over. It's never over, you, you know. And we're that kind of team. We're a dangerous team. You know, when you press like the way we do and the way we play, I mean, it's just, it's really hard. We just got, we had to, you know, if we would have made 10 more free throws, made a couple free throws, made a couple layups, the game would have been a lot different. But, I mean, we, you know, did what we did. We held them 52 points. I don't know if anybody else is going to do that, you know, in a long time. And obviously, I know he knows that too. That's the kind of team we are. We're just going to um, play really good defense. But, well, like I've been saying for three days, anybody playing the NCAA tournament is going to play good defense. Good defensive teams win games. Obviously, you got to make some points and do some things. But I think if we would have made a couple more layups, Moss missed layup, kind of going down the stretch would have put us down only by one, and she missed that. And then, you know, we missed some cru crucial free throws. So the game was, to me, the game was definitely even. Um, <clears throat> Coach, what, what do you have to do? you think to take that next step? Um, you basically had the game like right there. Um, and not in your opinion, because I don't want to get you in trouble, there was clearly some acting on the floor earlier. So, I mean, that also played a part in you losing the lead. Um, but what do you think you need to do to take the next step to get into the Sweet 16 tight Final Four? <laughs> Well, I always used to, when I was everywhere, Albany or Missouri State, when I was coaching and getting into the NCAA tournament in those places, I always said you gotta you gotta be really good and you gotta get really lucky. You gotta get it really lucky, you know. Like these neutral, I, I really think it would be neutral sites will really help in women's basketball because that's I mean, every year I was at Missouri State, I mean, and we were going to people's home courts. The only time that I didn't we didn't do that, I can't even remember when I was at Albany, we. Got a neutral site. Um, I can't even remember where it was, but that that that's really helpful because when you no matter if you went to South Carolina, if you go to Iowa State, I, I definitely didn't want to go to Iowa State. I coached at Iowa State for years. I didn't want to go there. You know, that's it's just the home court advantage is big time for anybody. You know, and obviously they earn that right. But um, you know, moving forward, you're asking. Um, you know, I think it's going to really help having Diamondback next year for sure. 
you know, because when we got a lot of people in that locker room that, you know, are going to be really hungry and ready to go. We signed some really good players too, come coming in, and we got some really good bigs coming in. And obviously, we're going to kind of wait on the portal a little bit and maybe get some good transfers. And hopefully, they watched. Coach, at what point during the maybe the course of the game, you and your, your coaching staff starting to recognize that what you were doing was was at least your defense, what what it was doing was really frustrating them and, and giving them giving them fits. Start of the game, yeah. at the very beginning of the game, you know, um, uh, and you know to play against us, you, you got to have veterans to know how to play against us. You can't you can't mimic our what we do in practice. I say that all the time. You know, I mean. Even in our league, you got to – a day's not going to cut it, you know. So, you know, I, I, I felt it right at the beginning. You know, I felt like our defense was good, our press. You know, we didn't get a lot of traps, but it still kind of slowed them down a little bit. And, um, you know, I think – I think I, I mean, I just knew right away. I kept saying in timeouts, I mean, we're not going away. I don't – we're, we're going to keep playing and doing what we're doing, you know. And we're, we're right where we need to be, except in that run where they got – you know, they got those 12 points, and then we, you know, kind of came back again. And then the other question would be, I, I, all season long your team hadn't had any sort of foul trouble, and then two games in this, this tournament. And it, it, How much did that somewhat change your game plan? And then also the perseverance for your ladies being able to, to fight through that and still be where you were at? Yeah. I mean, I just – I'm, you know, I'm not going to get in trouble, but I, I don't understand why – Two of the referees have never done either of our leagues, either. Either of our didn't, not in the biggies, not in our league. Two of them. So I'm confused about that. So that probably didn't help either of our teams because no matter what anybody says, we both play physical. I mean, South Carolina plays physical. Iowa State plays physical. Any good team is going to play physical, you know. And so you need to have, you know, all the cards right and all, all the people, you know, I think there's one official does both of our leagues or she definitely does one. So she knows how we play. Like, every, you know how we play. You know what I'm saying? So I think it was just like, whoo, everybody – I mean, his whole team was in foul trouble too. That's crazy. In the NCAA tournament, you don't want to see all the best players sitting on the bench. You don't. So I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. But both teams were in foul trouble. Both. It wasn't just us, you know. So I, I'm just glad we found a way to – persevere and obviously he found a way to persevere through that too because that's hard that's hard to you know I thought um Neela did a good job for her I don't know how many minutes she played came in and played and you know and had to kind of fight through that too but I don't know I don't know if I answered your question did I <laughs> fight through yeah I mean playing with some fouls I mean they both uh, I mean Desto, Desto had four, Moss had four. Lish fouled out. Lish, Lish never <laughs> fouls out. Oh my gosh. One more. To, to piggyback off that question, um, <clears throat> on a scale of one to 10, um, without you saying it, I'm going to say it, it seemed like UConn was doing some, as I stated before, good flop acting. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how frustrating was it? Sorry. <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, how frustrating was it? Um, to see fouls that maybe you didn't think you should have received on your team. Well, you know, I'm. I, I always think that you know when it gets to this level, and and, uh, and you say it in the NBA and all this stuff too. Like you want to see the best players out there and compete against each other. And I, I didn't feel like either team had that opportunity to do that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, their best players were sitting too, and so were ours. But I mean, we all came through it. We, I always tell our players, you got to play through it. You got to play through it, and then you got to adjust. You definitely got to adjust. You know what I mean? And so we all, both teams, had to figure out a way to adjust. And you know, good good teams can kind of play through that. And you know, I thought Mossy did a good job of playing through that because she had a bunch. And um, Lish was probably shocked because she the, the kid never fouls out ever in her life. I mean, she's you know, so. I mean, I just think we we just had to weather the storm pretty much through the you know the rest of the game. Any more questions for Coach? No. Thank you very much, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.